everyone, and thank you for coming. I hope your lunch was at least tasty. Did you enjoy your lunch? Okay. <laughs> uh, let me start from introducing myself one more time. I work for Google Ireland, basically for trust and safety department. And in trust and safety department, we protect our Google users from web abuse and different kinds of, kinds of frauds in a lot of different products like search, Gmail, Maps, etc. And before we start, I want to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, how many of you have used Bigtable in some form? One, two. I see two hands in. Great. And what about Maps, YouTube, Gmail, Gmail? How many of you have used those services in the last day, 24 hours? Okay, almost everyone. In an hour. Okay, I still see a couple of people. And it is what you are doing right now. Okay. <laughs> still, but you don't have notebooks, how you can do that? <laughs> okay, okay. Big Table is a technology behind pretty much all of Google multi-billion users services. We have seven multi-billion user services and the database for all of them is a uh, Big Table. Uh, with Big Table, in general, you can have absolutely the same capacity of what Google has to power and to build pretty much all or a lot of our internal and external products. And, okay, next. Um, our agenda for today is quite short. First of all, uh, I will present how Bigtable works, the roots of Bigtable, just to make sure that everyone on the same page give you some short introduction. Then we will discuss different ways how you can interact with Bigtable as a developer, as an analyst, and then we'll jump into cloud and processing your data in the cloud with Cloud Bigtable. Okay, let's start from and yes, let's start from Bigtable roots. Um, I think you might know that in in the world and at Google we have a lot of different data. Basically, it's not always well structured or it might be semi-structured. We cannot say that all kinds of data is unstructured or structured. Uh, usually it's some mix. That is why we see a huge growth of NoSQL databases. Good example is page. Just imagine that you own a troller and troller trolls different pages in the internet. Outside of just a content of the page, you also have the time when it was crawled, anchors, page rank for, for the page, different statistics about links, etc., etc., etc. Another great example is geographical location when you know about different objects on the map, like places, routes, roads, time between points, etc., etc. And again, because we deal with billions of users, we have a very huge scale of all of those things, and we have to design the base that should store petabytes of data. At the same time, we have very strict requirements for the delay and for the speed of access, basically. And uh, we should serve you very, very fast, every of your requests. Uh, one more question. Have you ever experienced delays with your search results in Google? For example, for more than 0.5 seconds. Awesome, zero. I'm satisfied. It means that it works perfectly fine. And uh, the same for support, because we need to provide the concurrent support for billion users for very predictable latency. And we give the same predictable latency to you as a service. Okay, let me start from a, from a history of Bigtable. Design and initial implementation of Bigtable was started beginning 2004, and it was, uh, finished as a paper in 2006. It means that we used Bigtable for a lot, a lot of time. 
if you are like a paper nerd, white paper nerd as me, you can go and read big table white paper. I think if you will print something like big table PDF paper, it should be one of the fir first, second, or third result in Google for that table. It describes the internal architecture, uh, structure, how it performs, and performance testing. But be careful because it was published uh, how many years ago? 11 years ago. And for performance tests, it might be a little bit outdated because our computers become powerful. So what is Bigtable? First of all, it's now a SQL database. And you are dealing with QLU store, not a usual column-based database. Uh, it was designed for very, very large data sets. We are talking not about petabyte size, but also about hundreds and thousands of attributes. And it provides very high throughput for your requests. Um, basically, the topic of my presentation is how to use Bigtable for scalable data processing. And Bigtable was originally designed for those kind of things. Uh, and again, you can imagine how critical if you work with data processing a lot, you can imagine how critical quick data access with consistent and predictable delays for every data processing pipeline, specifically when we are talking about business reports or business analysis. Great. Let's jump into Cloud Bigtable. It was like a root of Bigtable, and now let's jump into Cloud Bigtable. As you remember, we announced Cloud Bigtable in 2015. It's more than two years uh, on a table, available for our users. And uh, as I mentioned before, Cloud Bigtable is NoSQL big data database service. Uh, again, it powers the same services, we use the same big table as we provide for you guys. Uh, and it powers, again, analytics, maps, search, Gmail. Uh, big table designed to handle very massive workload at consistent, very low latency uh, delay. And it provides very high throughput for this stuff. From, I can imagine that you can use it for both operational and analytical work. And from top of my head, a couple of examples. Internet of Things might be a great, uh, a great source for data that you can store in Bigtable. Also as financial services, because in finance you always have big amount of data. And I will tell you a small secret that behind the Bigtable service, uh, we have absolutely the same SREs, Site Reliability Engineers, who provide support for big table service for both for cloud users and for all internal users. It means that I am as internal user of big table have absolutely the same support from absolutely the same people as you if you use cloud big table service. Um, we have been running big table for more than 10 years as I mentioned before initial wor version 2004. Uh, what does it mean that first of all we know how to support it, we know how to cook it, we uh, felt in all possible situations and now it's super stable and we have the same support from our internal teams uh, as you have. One exception before we will jump into some exact numbers, if you want to track for example shopping cart in uh, some new market site or shopping site with very limited number of items with very, num very limited number of clients for example, you are selling luxury stuff. And your data is very structured. You have only uh, up to 50 gigs of data. I don't think that the big table is a good choice for that case. But for everything else outside, for as I mentioned before, for operational analytical job uh, work, jobs, it might be a great decision, a great solution. OK. How does Cloud Bigtable works? Uh, clients uh, connect to some kind of balancing tier. You can think about it as a load balancer and interact with load balancer. We provide you an entry point to that place where, that you can use in every of your client, in every of your software, in every piece of your software. Uh, 
notes themselves, big table notes, reads and writes, every note reads and writes data to our Colossus file system. Uh, before Colossus, it was GFS, and again, just a quick note, if you want to learn more about Google file system, go to Google GFS or Google file system PDF paper, you will find very interesting reading. Um, it's very important to understand that the storage within Bigtable uh, is separate than the notes. Notes interact directly with storage. And the main thing that notes provides only a throughput, and I will tell you a little bit later how many QPS you can expect from every node, queries per second. Uh, and the original data, data itself, stored in Colossus file system, uh, and you can dynamically add any amount of nodes or limit them up to three because three is the minimum number of cluster for big table. It gives you very, very high power to limit the number of nodes that you need and to project the number of resources that you need for your service. If you expect to have some high load in a specific time, you can allocate additional nodes or decrease to minimum if you don't need them or if you just want to make some very limited number of GET requests to the system. Um, and quick note about storage. Uh, it's very stable, heavy replicated, and durable storage. And again, if you want to learn more about Colossus file system or Google file system, GFS white paper is published, and Colossus, just Google Colossus, and you will find, find a lot of very interesting information about the design and the implementation of Colossus. Okay. Um, Cloud Big Table learns access patterns to the system. Just imagine that you have five keys. And some nodes are handling a division of the population of those keys. Now imagine that you have a very high throughput, very high load to a specific node. Cloud Big Table learn, learns access patterns and rebalance the data accordingly. If you, the node number two experience very high load, it's become hot and harsher. Uh, our balancing tiers, as I mentioned in my initial slide, will rebalance it to a second node with less load and will provide access through another node. Everything will be done automatically for you. You don't need to worry about it. Just uh, specify internally on, in your software that you want to connect to the specific cluster. Let's talk about throughput. Um, adding nodes in completely linear upward scale operation. What does it mean? If you have three nodes, uh, we can say that every node can handle approximately 10K, 10,000 uh, requests per second, QPS queries per second. And because the minimum size of cluster is three, your default QPS is 30K. It's quite a big number. Uh, and absolutely the same linear pattern when you're adding nodes. If you have more nodes, you'll have more throughput. Uh, and these examples, I hope, yeah, these numbers should be correct. Please check and tell me if it's wrong. For 300 nodes, you will have 3 million QPS, and these are real numbers. We have real clients, real customers doing these things at scale. It's like not some artificial tests. It's real uh, experiment with our clients. Just imagine, 3 million QPS, 3 million queries per second. I have one more question to you guys. Uh, do you use two-step verification? Because you see I'm from Trust and Safety, that is why I have to ask you. Almost everyone who doesn't use it. Please turn it on. <laughs> okay. okay, when you are logging to your cloud uh, console, uh, first of all, turn on two-step verification. Uh, it should protect your account from hacks phishing, etc. Uh, and in the next couple of slides, I will show you how to run your own cluster and start using it. 
before we start, if you want to learn more, if you want to up and run your personal cluster, and uh, in the end of the presentation, we'll have some time for questions, and I just I will have a small present for you that will give you a chance to run your small, your big cluster for your experiments. If you want to start, your main entry point should be cloudgoogle.com slash big table. It includes documentation, links, code examples, links to clients, uh, explanations step by step how to up and run your cluster, everything you need to know about the cloud big table. Uh, how to create your own clusters. It's pretty simple to get started with the service itself. Just go to UI and I show you a UI example, but you can do absolutely the same step with CLI client line uh, command line interface story. Uh, you pick a name, you pick a cluster, ID for a cluster, you pick a zone, number of nodes, and the type of storage. Yes, Bigtable is zonal service. Um, I know that a lot of companies have very strong requirements to store data in separate places. For example, in case of some disaster, you should have a copy of your data on different continents in a, or in a different parts of continents, of the continent, sorry. And uh, that is why we ask you to select a zone. You need, you need to pick up a number of nodes for your cluster. The minimum number is three, as I mentioned before. And it's the minimum size that makes sense for data that you are gonna to put into Cloud's big table. If you have less data or if you have less throughput, uh, it might be not a right place, I mean big table, for storing your data. Then you need to pick up SSD or HDD drive. Of course, SSD is a recommended way. It's faster, but it's more expensive. And, but it could guarantee you very low latency for your requests. Uh, let me stress that point a little bit more. Uh, I saw a couple of cases when you can store your data in two separate databases, the same data, with high access to do your map reduces at scale for the entire data, and SSD for quick and easy requests to your, uh, to your records. Uh, operations, as I mentioned before, we say that you can read with 30K QPS with six milliseconds delay for every request with two additional nodes. First node, uh, the 99 percentile is six milliseconds for accessing your data, and I think it's super fast. I have never seen it, seen faster communication through the networks. And if your records are large, the overall bandwidth for your data is 660 megabytes. Every row in big table is up to 100 megabytes. That is why if you have very long and complicated records, uh, you will be limited by the size of your records, not by the number of requests per second. Cool. Let's talk a little bit more about how you can connect and how you can use big table. First of all, if you have age-based clients, you can continue to use it. You can do nothing to switch to big table because we have a connector that compatible with Apache HBase API. Specify big table and use it without changing your code. Second is Go client and Python client. Uh, of course, me personally, because I'm a contributor to Python client, uh, I like the simplicity of Python and the simplicity of using it, specifically for data analysts. Uh, and I will show you how it, easy it is in a second. And the last tool that you can use is CBT command line tool. CBT is a, just an interface for performing several operations on Cloud Big Table, like create table, create, uh, add nodes, create column families, add column, get one record. Very easy, very easy to use during the debugging process or developing or just quick analysis when you are trying to find the mistake on production. Uh, again, can recommend you Plus, with CBT, you can up and run your small big table on your machine for developing purposes. Again, very useful if you don't want to, <coughs> if you don't want to process a lot of data, but you just want to check how your code works, how it combines your data. By the way, uh, CBT client 
is based on our own Go library. Uh, it means that you can uh, discover the code and best practices on GitHub because Go client and Python client are open sourced and uh, hosted on GitHub. Cool. Let's jump to quick example. So we have a cluster, we have a name, we have a things that we, that we want to connect to. You know your cluster size, you can predict your throughput. Uh, and uh, now you just want to make some simple code. Uh, let me go through the code. It's super simple. Import big table, create client, create instance, create table. And now inside table object, you have everything you need. You can create columns, you can request rows, you can process rows, uh, you can manage your data. Uh, and believe me, every string, every next string is uh, the same, has absolutely the same simplicity when you can just put data in a big table and say commit. Um, if you will hear some unknown terms, please, come and ask me after the presentation during the question sessions. Uh, but before we start, I have one more question to you guys. Uh, how many of you have used or used regularly Hadoop or Apache Spark? Hadoop, Apache Spark, or HDFS, Hadoop file system? Okay. So, um, I will tell you a little bit more how you can integrate with Hadoop and Apache Spark. Before the integration, let me show you the list of the operations that supports by Cloud Bigtable. Uh, I ordered them from liest to heaviest. This one is very uh, fast uh, and requires very limited number of, res of resources. Uh, put is very simple, put any record, increment up and absolutely predictable. I do like conditional updates, because with conditional updates you can say, if the column value is x, then do the operation, otherwise don't. Uh, very useful in a lot of cases when you don't want to get the record, analyze it in your code, and then submit changes. You can do it in one transaction in that small time window of six milliseconds. And bulk import for your map reduces because you can use Bigtable as both as sync or as a source for your map reduces or data processing pipelines. Uh, and you can put all the data, all process data inside Bigtable. Let's talk about outputs. Again, simple get, range, uh, filter. Filter, again, I'm a big, uh, a big fan of filter because you can say, okay, give me records from uh, A to C and exclude all records when x greater than some value. Very useful. Uh, it's very expressive because you can put your business logic in one string and express your thoughts in just one string and Bigtable will process it in one particular request. Plus you have bulk operations. Um, in, for example, I added uh, bulk processing into Python client, it means that you can specify a couple of operations, submit it as one request, and Bigtable will send you one response explaining what was performed for every of your requests. Very beautiful. Um, one thing uh, that I want to mention, be very careful with export because Bigtable is parsed data storage. It means that it, if you have a holes in your, in your data, it's not the same as holes in classical uh, uh, SQL databases. Every hole takes zero space, it's free. But if you try to export it in classical SQLs or in binary formats, it can, take, it can be much larger than you can see in your panel. Be very careful with full export to some non-binary formats or some not optimized formats. Okay, uh, now let's jump to the core of my talk. We have two separate very cool features, very cool services that you can use to process your data at scale. I wanna start from Cloud Dataflow. Excuse me. Yes. Um, once we store data, we need to be able to process it at scale. Our goal is to process it as fast as possible. As I mentioned before, client Bigtable can be both source and sync for your data. And uh, for 
new pipelines, I would recommend you to go and discover what is data flows. For the last years, Google published a lot of papers. Uh, we published paper about Bigtable, about MapReduce, about Flume, Flume is next generation MapReduce, uh, about file systems, and our knowledge about MapReduce and Flume we combined in a product that we call Google Cloud Dataflow. Dataflow is now ops data processing that scales and uh, dynamic, that has scalable, uh, scalable way to handle your tasks and uh, it has auto sharding function inside without any, uh, in, any actions from your site. Uh, the cloud data flow can connect to Bigtable. Basically, we have three storages that you can use with uh, data flow. It's Bigtable, BigQuery, and classical storage. But the, uh, I am concentrated around uh, Bigtable. If you use Java, and if you like HBase, if you prefer to connect with HBase, uh, we have a connector that you can use directly import in your libraries and use it. Uh, the biggest plus of data flow from my point of view is that you don't need to think about clusters, you don't need to think about uh, data processing as some task for managing your hardware. You can just use Python or Java, you can specify the pipeline for processing your data step by step, and on every step you define mutations on your data and everything else will be done for you automatically by uh, cloud data flow. As a programmer, as a pipeline developer, you can express only your thoughts about how data should be processed. Uh, Google Cloud Data Flow will do all the job for you. It will reassign tasks for slow nodes. It will recreate, it will analyze slow nodes for you, will drop them, will assign the task to another node, and it means that every job will be done in the most effective way without any additional steps from your site. But what if you need a way to run open source processing pipelines, uh, sorry, engines? Uh, if you already have a lot of code with Hadoop or Spark and you wanna run Hive or pick queries on top of your processing engines. Classical pipeline is to run your own cluster, manage this, the, that cluster, uh, run your analytical pipelines, uh, and analyze the output. From my previous experience, I know that the biggest part of time you either, either need more resources or your cluster uh, waits for the job and just do nothing. Uh, with Google Cloud Data Proc, you can just submit your job uh, submit your Hadoop or Spark processing pipeline. We provide data proc API. Read data from, for example, if it's a MapReduce, Hadoop MapReduce, make a full scan from your big table, run your pi pipeline, get your output, and turn down your cluster. What does it mean that as a developer, you think about cluster as the place for uh, just doing your jobs? not by I need to run cluster, I need to manage cluster, to thoughts like I need to, write, to run my pipeline, push it to system, it will process my data from my big table with full scan, and I will get my output without any restrictions and will notify me. Uh, if you wanna run your tasks by schedule, you can always use data proc API instead of uh, manual runs uh, to run your code. One more time, I want to stress the, uh, that point one more time. You can run proce data processing only when you need it. You can up your cluster, execute your pipeline, and it will take only, like, it's a matter of minutes or even seconds. Execute your data processing and turn down. Not pay for entire cluster 24-7 pay only when you use it, when you need it, without basically changing your Hadoop or your Spark code. And uh, before we will jump into questions, let me try to project one question from your side, guys. I know that in Google, we have a lot of different storages. We have 
uh, BigQuery, Cloud SQL, Firebase, uh, what I forgot. Yes, thank you. And it's very hard to decide what you want to use, what you want to get for your new project. Um, I want to recommend you a link. Let me open it. Uh, we have a spe separate place, separate article, choosing a storage options. And it has very nice decision tree. Sorry, it's too, my screen is too small. But basically, we have a decision tree where you can go through the case, through, the, through your case, and decide which type of database do you want to use. Or if you want to just discuss it, I will be here for entire day. Come and ask. And thank you very much. I would be happy to answer your questions. Thank you.